Hey guys! Today I thought I would share with you some common abbreviations and terms that I have learned while working in the OBGYN field. I figured this would be helpful for those of you who are considering working in the field once you're done with school or if you're in school and you are about to enter the pediatric slash OBGYN nursing course. Maybe these will help you while you're doing your homework or studies or learning about certain things in that class. So these are in no particular order. Over the last couple of weeks I've just been writing them down in my handy dandy notebook. So yeah. JDM is gestational diabetes mellitus. Um, DM, if you've already taken endocrinology, you know that that's diabetes mellitus. Um, BID, TID, QID. This is something that you will learn in whatever field you're working in when you're filling prescriptions for patients and also um, in pharmacology when you're learning the med term for that. So BID is twice a day, TID is three times a day, QID is four times a day. PO is obviously by mouth and STAT means ASAP or immediately, like it needs to be done now. BTL, bilateral tubal ligation. Um, a lot of times if I ask, I'll see it in their chart and I'll ask, oh you had a tubal ligation and they're like, I don't know what that is but I've had my tubes tied. That's what a tubal ligation is. Um, and bilateral means both, obviously. TBH is a total vaginal hysterectomy. Um, we see a lot of people that have had a TBH, but they don't know if they still have their ovaries and um, fallopian tubes. So the if they take their ovaries out, that's a oophorectomy. And if the fallopian tubes are removed, that's the salpingectomy. Um, and when they come in, if they're new patients and they've had all of that done, I always put in their chart, TVH with oophorectomy and salpingectomy. It's called like a total vaginal hysterectomy with salp salping oophorectomy if you want to put all of it together I think. That's what I learned way back in nursing school I think. TOC can mean two things. Test of cure, transfer of care. So I look in the patient, patient's chart when they're coming in and if they came in about a month ago and got swabbed for gonorrhea, chlamydia and their culture came back positive, I know that we're doing test of cure. So we're going to re-swab them that day to make sure that the antibiotics we gave them cleared up their infection. And if it's still there, obviously we need to treat again. Transfer of care, sometimes they want to transfer from one practice to our practice or they want to be transferred from our practice to another practice. BV is bacterial vaginosis. GCC is the gonorrhea chlamydia culture. Um, we do that swab a lot. That one and the new swab, which is next on my list, the new swab tests for everything. BV, yeast, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and trick. And ED is the emergency department. ER is emergency room, obviously. C slash O or CO is complain, complains of, complaint of. Um, DT is due to. Rx means prescription, Tx is treatment, Hx is history, Dx diagnosed, diagnosis, Bc is birth control. And you'll see a lot of times when they're coming in to discuss with the doctor in the notes, the front office will put Bc consult. Rcs is routine C-section. LMP, last menstrual period. That is so important and so many times especially the younger women when they're coming in and I'll be like, okay, so when was the first day of your last menstrual? They'll tell me and because a lot of people have those fancy apps now and then they'll be like, why do you need to know that? Well, if the first day of your last period was, you know, January 28th and here we are April 9th, um, you might be pregnant <laughs> or something is going on. UPT is urinary pregnancy test. Beta that is like the number one blood test that we do. We have to draw a beta to make sure that their pregnancy is viable before they get their ultrasound. We also test that if their period is late. And we also do a beta if they are getting a IUD or like a Nexplanon inserted in their arm and we know they're sexually active. Um, yeah, so MAB is a missed abortion also known as a miscarriage, and then EAB is an elective abortion, meaning the patient wanted to get rid of that fetus. FHR is fetal heart rate. NST is non-stress test. The non-stress test machine is the number one thing that we do all the time at my facility. We constantly have women being put on those 
for the number one reason women at my practice get put on the NST is for polyhydraminose, which is excess um, amniotic fluid around the baby. And we just want to make sure, you know, that baby's doing okay in there, that their heart rate is normal. And yeah. UDS is a urinary drug screen. DC is discharge. And discharge could mean vaginal discharge or discharge from the hospital or some other facility. PP, postpartum. So if you see OBPP, it's obstetric postpartum. Um, most of the time they've already had their baby. They're coming in for a two-week, four-week, or six-week follow-up. EDS is the Edinburgh Depression Scale, and we do that at their first initial OB visit. We give it to them 26 to 28 weeks, and then they'll get it in the emergency room as soon as they deliver, and then they'll get it at their six-week postpartum visit. It's very important to give those out because any woman that is suffering, any woman that is suffering from postpartum depression, my facility we have a therapist that works with us, and she can you know talk to you once, twice, four times a week if you need it. And it's important to discuss how you're feeling, especially if you're having feelings of self harm, because if you're, especially if you're a new mother, a lot of them don't know what they're doing. They feel like. Um, even though the maternal instinct tells you what to do for your baby, but they still feel like they're not enough. They cry for no reason, and they got the baby blues and all this other stuff. So we just want to make sure that you're happy and healthy all throughout your pregnancy, including after. Gravita is total pregnancies, including any miscarriages or abortions or ectopics. Para is how many were carried to a term and delivered. Um, RTO, return to office, RCTO, return call to office, VM, voicemail, SX is symptoms, RPOC, remaining pieces of conception. So if we have a, if we have a patient that goes to the ER and has a DNC, which is a dilation and curatage, um, wow, I can't believe I didn't put that on here, um, those are very common. So they go in and they'll scrape everything out to make sure that there's no remaining conception parts and then when they come in for their follow-up always have them pee in a cup and draw up a UPT to make sure that they are not pregnant. If they still have fragments left inside the UPT is going to be positive and they need to be given medication to expel the rest of that or they need to have another DNC and get everything scraped out. PPH, postpartum hemorrhage, IUGR, intrauterine growth restriction. That is the second reason why we have a lot of women on the NSTs at my facility because their baby's measuring too big, their baby's measuring too small, or their baby's just not really growing, but their heart rate is normal. And NSVD is normal spontaneous vaginal delivery. So the system that we use at work when we get to the obstetric part where they had babies it will ask um, abortions induced, abortions spontaneous. So abortion induced means that the person wanted that abortion. They wanted to get rid of the fetus. Abortion spontaneous, it's just like you having a baby and your body wants to expel it. You're ready to give birth. The abortion spontaneous means the body just couldn't carry that baby for some reason and got rid of it. So that's also known as a miscarriage. Um, I really hope that these terms help you guys. I'm still learning. I have started doing room nursing at my job. I'm going to be room nursing by myself completely on Tuesday. So I'm very nervous and excited to see how that goes. I have also, yesterday I helped insert my first IUD, which is an intrauterine device. It was a Mirena. And then I assisted with my first Culpo, which is a colposcopy, where they take biopsies of the cervix. And I have another one coming up on Tuesday. I'm going to be by myself for that. So we'll see how that goes. And earlier this past week, I also did my first punch biopsy of the vulva. There was a little growth on there and she wanted it checked out. So she did a punch biopsy and we sent it to the lab. So OBGYN field is very exciting. You're going to learn something new every day. And you just have to really take each day as a learning opportunity. If there's something at any job that you're doing that you have never done and you want to see it or learn how to do it, jump in there. Be hands-on. Nursing is hands-on. And everybody, especially like me, I love people that are willing to learn. I love learning. So just get in there. Hands-on. Just, hey, I've never done that before. Let me do it. And when I did the IUD yesterday, the room nurse I usually work with kind of just threw me to the wolves. Like, here, this is what you do. These are, This is all the supplies that you need. And I'm like, 
oh my gosh, I was so nervous, but it went really well. I was a little shaky in the beginning, but I did it and it was awesome and I love my job. So if you guys have any questions, comments, video suggestions, as always, please feel free to leave them. You can follow me on Instagram at live life happy underscore in between live and happy 154. And yeah, I'll leave that down below and I will make a new video for you guys soon.